Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Meepolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at another work that I referenced in my Black Comics TBR video. Check out the link. Namely, Hot Comb by Ebony Flowers. This collection of short stories was published fairly recently in 2019 by Drawn and Quarterly. The for first story in this collection was also nominated for this year's Eisner's Award in the short story category. But before we get too far, today's recommend recommended black booktuber is the novel Lush. Yet another solid follow with lots of very good recommendations. Click the link below to check her out. Getting back into the collection itself, I hadn't noticed anything myself to warn people about, but several reviewers commented about how it reminded them of their own painful history with hair, which while the scenes in the story are not dramatic, is very understandable. I guess I would also point out, as someone who has difficulty reading cursive, there is a lot less after the first story and almost none after that. This is certainly a me problem more than it is a book problem, but I figured I w should reassure people who also suffer from this personal shortcoming. According to the bio in the back of the book, Ebony Flowers was born and raised in Maryland. She holds a BA in Biological Anthropology from the University of Maryland College Park and a PhD in Curriculum and Instruction from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where she wrote her dissertation as a comic, mostly. Looking at the official description, the collection is summarized as follows. Hot Comb offers a poignant glimpse into black women's lives and coming-of-age stories as seen across a crowded, ammonia-scented hair salon. The titular story, Hot Comb, is about a young girl's first perm, a doomed ploy to look cool and stop seeming too white in the all-black neighborhood her family has just moved to. Realization about race, class, and the imperfection of identity swirl through these stories, which are by turns sweet, insightful, and heartbreaking. Following in the rich tradition of Linda Berry, Ebony Flowers addresses the somewhat harsh, sometimes devastating pangs of childhood endings. She pays beautiful homage to the struggle to find your place in a world that has such rigid rules about who you are. Drawn in quarterly publisher and the Publisher and acquiring editor Peggy Burns commented, Hot Comb explores the poetry in everyday life, all the while centering the lives and stories of black women. Ebony's ease with the comic language is remarkable. Her black and white drawings, as well as her color college work, are both equally stunning. The one thing that I felt was perhaps not super clear jumping into this collection is that while it's nonfiction, it's a collection of a number of women's stories from across the diaspora, with one story from Toronto and another from Luanda, Angola, and many other places. I'm now very interested in seeing how Flower's academic background influences her work going forward. Race is obviously a central theme in this collection, as is the apparently cis woman side of the gender binary, with the undercurrent of class awareness to fill things out. But until health is touched on in a few of the stories, I certainly cannot stress enough the importance of a collection like this, highlighting the past and present of black hair, something that has been a central battleground in the white supremacist culture I live in. I'm very easily rating this book 5 out of 5 stars. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.